No, I'm not refilming this again. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nabila and if you're new here, please subscribe and let me know what other videos you want me to make. First things first, yes, there is something different about me today. I have a nose ring. It's not real. I don't plan on getting a real one, but if you think it looks good, let me know. So anyways, let's just get straight into it. What is Clubhouse? Should you even care? Today I want to answer those questions and also tell you the pros and cons as well as my personal experiences. Let's go. <laughs> so first of all, what is Clubhouse? Well, it's an app that allows you to connect with others around the world using audio. If you try to sign up for it right now, this is what you would see. It's quote unquote an exclusive app because you need to be invited by someone else who has your phone number and they can let you in. They nominate you and then once they've done that, their name appears on your profile. Once you do sign up, you get two free invites to invite other people. They have to be iPhone users and in the future I'm sure it will expand into Android as well. And then over time you get sent more invites and I've noticed that also you can let in some of your friends who are on the waiting list if they have your mobile phone number. You've probably heard of the app by now. By the time you're seeing this, you might actually be on it yourself. I've seen it gradually expand. And it's often referred to as like being in the queue of a club. So you want to get in, but you don't know what's going on on the inside. And I hope I can break that down for you today. Let's talk about some of the key terms that you'll see on Clubhouse. First one, a club. What is a club? Well, <laughs> a club is a place where like-minded individuals can go and share their thoughts and discuss things. So there might be a club for language learning. This is the example I'm going to keep using actually. Language learning clubs. There are quite a few and they will host regular rooms based on the topic of language learning. So the next term is rooms. A room is basically a space where you can talk about things. That's the main place on Clubhouse is all these different rooms hosted by different clubs or sometimes just hosted by people who want to make a room. Like I could make a room right now. You could make one if you're on the app. You don't have to be part of a club, but you can make a club if you want to. So for example, one of the language learning clubs that I'm part of hosts daily rooms where people can practice their languages like Jamaican, Hindi, English, French, Russian, Chinese, like basically a lot of different languages and that's recurring every day. So we've talked about clubs and rooms. Another word that comes up a lot is pinging and pings. It's kind of self-explanatory, like when you get pinged into a room, you get invited to a room basically, like you can get a notification from one of your contacts pinging you to a room if you're just scrolling on the app or maybe if you are in a room already and they'll be telling you, hey, I think you might enjoy this or hey, I want you into this room to boost the algorithm because I need more people in it. Yeah, <laughs> but basically people can ping you and try and direct you to their room if they think that you might benefit from it. Another one, moderator. So when you make a room, you become a moderator and you can assign other people to be moderators with you. You don't have to have loads, sometimes it's just one person, but basically it's in the name, they moderate the room, they keep the conversation flow going and they try, well, in essence, they should try and keep everything under control when things get out of hand. They can also unmute people's microphones or let people speak. They can invite people to the stage to speak. Yeah, they have a few more controls that people in the audience don't have. Audience versus the stage, two more terms. So if you're in the audience, you're just listening. You don't have the chance to speak, but if you raise your hand, you can let the moderators know that you want to speak and they can invite you to the stage. The stage is the place where anybody who is speaking is basically on. That's the platform, it's above the audience. Yeah, it's the stage. So if you want to speak, you can go on the stage. Not everybody on the stage has to be speaking though, because they can just mute their microphones. Another thing you might hear sometimes when you're in a room is resetting. What does that mean? Well, I think it's a word that came about by the users of Clubhouse, which is how language games work, I guess. Resetting is basically when a mod or someone who's been in the room for a while will explain what's going on in the room, especially for new members or people who just joined in and are a bit confused. Because sometimes it's in the title of the room, you can figure it out quite easily if it says Clubhouse X Factor, which is one that I've been in. And I got the crown, by the way, but it was, it was a small room. You would expect people to be singing in a room called Clubhouse X Factor. But in other rooms, it starts off with one topic and then tangents form and then you kind of lose track of what's going on. So that's why you need to reset the room sometimes. For example, if I was to reset this video right now, I would be like, for anybody who's just joining me, I'm talking about Clubhouse. That's about it. <laughs> so, there's a lot of different functions on the app as well. For instance, when you swipe left, you can hide the room. Also, another thing to note is about the clubs, you can apply to make a new club. Obviously, it's a new app. Well, it's a fairly new app. And I see new clubs are emerging like every day, but there's still going to be a lot of things that don't exist yet. So if you want to fill the gap, just search for the application form on Google and you can easily apply. At the moment, I think they're quite overwhelmed and there's a back date with lots of people applying to make clubs. So don't expect it to be approved straight away. I applied for one, I still haven't heard back, and if I do, I will let you know what that room was. Well, what that club was, sorry. 
So let's move on to some of the positives now, and I think there are quite a few. I was reading an article a few weeks ago which said that audio may be the future of social media, and I think this app tries to do that. Did it succeed? I don't know, you tell me. I think this app is interesting because, you know, it connects people from all across the world and allows people to share their views on different topics. One of the pros that I've heard some people talking about is that you're able to room hop. So if you're in a room, particularly if you're in the audience, and you're not really interested in what's being said anymore, or you just want to explore a different room, you can easily leave. I think it's called like silently leave, so it doesn't really disrupt anyone else. And that's fine, so you can room hop and like listen into lots of different conversations. Another positive of this app is that it gives people a chance to speak. A lot of people who wouldn't be inclined to engage in like a video dialogue or something else online, they feel a bit more anonymous and it just feels a bit safer. Also, you don't have to like try and look good or whatever. You can just lie down and be talking and it's really chill. Whereas something like House Party, which was popular the last lockdown, and I can't lie, I'm kind of glad that it's died down since then. <laughs> I think that one was a bit more intimidating because you're usually with your friendship groups and then it might expand and you don't know who these people are, but they can see your video and like, it's just a bit awkward. So yeah, I think that's another plus of this app. Some other really big ones are networking. I've seen a lot of people make professional connections and of course there's rooms for those kind of things as well. Dating, there's rooms where people shoot their shot and all that kind of stuff, so that's another positive. And then making friends, like I've made some good friends already and I haven't even been on there for that long, so that's another really great thing. My friend was saying that this app is basically like a podcast, and I agree, it is like a free podcast, but I think it's more than that because it's more interactive. You can turn off your screen so you're saving battery and like the light isn't flashing in your face. You can also chime in to the different discussions that are happening, so it's more interactive and a bit more engaging. But yeah, there is like a wide variety of things being said all the time. You're watching this a week later, but yesterday Elon Musk came for the first time and gave a talk and like that almost broke the app. <laughs> Everyone went crazy and I think the app was crashing quite a lot. Another thing is that I think the app gives people a chance to change their perspective on different things or at least hear things from different sides. Like I was in a room where a Muslim was talking about why he voted Trump and that was quite controversial and a lot of people didn't agree with him but I think it was interesting to hear his point of view. Likewise, you can hear a lot of controversial, controversial things or even just like hear from someone who lives in a different country to you and listen to what their daily life is like. That's pretty cool and you can change people's perspective sometimes but more than anything, I think just listening is good. You don't always have to go in with the idea that you're going to change the world or whatever because your idea isn't always right. My idea isn't always right. Sometimes it's nice to just listen, you know? I think the last positive that I would give is at least for me, it's helped me to articulate things a bit better because I'm always engaged in these dialogues, well I mean not always, but like recently I've been engaged in so many dialogues because of Clubhouse. It's helped me to summarize key points because of some of my experiences being on stage or even as a moderator, it's made me have to think really actively. And when I'm on the phone to my friends and we get modeled up with whatever we're talking about, I can summarize it quite well. And I think that's a result of being on Clubhouse. So now let's talk a bit about the cons of Clubhouse because there definitely are a lot of those as well. First of all, everybody's been saying it's really dramatic. There are a lot of dramatic things that happen on there. I've seen quite a few myself. Some people say that certain people have been causing division on purpose for clout, and it seems to be the same few people. Like yesterday, I came across something which told me that this person had been blocked by multiple people in my network. That was a very interesting thing to see, and I think that's quite a unique feature. One of the most obvious cons, I think, is that it's very time consuming. Once you're in a room, you'll get sucked into another room and another room, or even you'll get into a discussion that can go on for quite a long time and next thing you know you wasted a few hours. But if you want to be mindful of how we use social media, we just need to time our usage and work on that ourselves, I guess, because this could apply to many other apps. Another thing though is that it kills your attention span. And I know a lot of people have been saying that and I would agree. For instance, what I said before regarding room hopping, if you think about it, it's a pro and a con. If you're not bothered to get engaged in a room discussion, you can easily leave and just go to another one and another one and another one. But it means that you haven't really focused on what's being said, you just keep leaving and that kills your attention span. And also you're bombarded with so many thoughts because you're listening to all these different people speak. That can also kill your attention span, I think, because like, how do you listen properly to everybody? It's quite difficult. Following on from that, it can be quite intimidating and overwhelming, especially when you first join, like everybody has more followers than you. You might see a lot of rooms where people are clout chasing, being very professional and all that kind of stuff because you haven't figured out your interests yet, you don't follow people yet. And there's a lot of rooms where it's like silent gains. You sit there and you turn your mic off and everybody's just meant to follow you and you follow them, which is an interesting concept again. If you want to do that, it's cool. I've tried it before, but I think it's very weird, so I don't know. I don't know if any of the developers of the app have come across my video. If you have, hi there, my name's Nabila. I would love to work with you one day. But also, please take into account the feedback I'm about to give you. The notifications. The notifications are out of hand. Like, I don't need to be told when everybody's in a room and stuff. Like, I just don't, don't really want to know, to be honest. <laughs> um, like, I wish there was a way 
where you can change the notifications that you receive and choose what you get notified for. Like at the moment, you can pause your notifications and I do this every day, I pause it until the next morning because honestly, I can't keep having these on my phone. I know that I could go to my phone settings and probably just remove them from my lock screen and my banner, but like I would rather just be able to change the notifications that I receive. I would rather be notified when I've been pinged into a room or like when a person whose notifications I've turned on are speaking and then I know that they're speaking. Sometimes the notifications are interesting because you can see like, oh, this person's speaking or this room's happening and those rooms can be interesting. But I don't want to always be notified about whatever's going on because sometimes when I want to swipe them away from my phone to close them, I accidentally enter the room and then I have to leave and it looks really rude. So I don't like that, please fix it. Another thing to the dear developers who may be watching this video, pass it on if they're not, is that I think there needs to be a clapping button so when you're on the stage and you agree with something that's being said, people unmute and mute their mic continuously, like really fast, they just keep pressing it. And that kind of indicates that you're in agreement with whatever's being said. And I feel like that's something again that the users have invented. But I just think it would be so much more useful if there was a clapping button instead. So like if the mic is on the right hand side, the clapping button would be on the left hand side. And similarly, you would just keep tapping it if you want to clap. And it wouldn't be distracting because it would just look the same as the mic. It would go dark and light and dark and light. But with the microphone, when you mute and unmute, first of all, I think it feels awkward. It looks awkward. I don't know if you agree with me on that. But second of all, sometimes your audio in the background comes on and off, like if there's sound in the background and it's really distracting. So I think there needs to be a clapping function that could be very useful. So another bad thing is trolling and like this comes into play with most social media. So there's not a surefire way to control this, but I think moderators can do a better job sometimes when it comes to trolls. Moving on from that though, moderating. Like I know the app is at its infancy and people aren't trained to be moderators, but I've seen so many bad moderators. I'm sure they'll gain experience over time and I'm not saying I'm the best either, but I think when I have been in a room, I've helped it quite a lot, even when I wasn't a moderator. Someone made a room that wasn't a deep discussion at all. It was just like banter, but they had nothing to talk about, like nothing. There was just awkward silences all the time. So I kept bringing things to say. I feel like if you're gonna make a room and be a moderator, at least have a little bit of preparation. But more than that, when it comes to a heated discussion, moderators need to be able to step in and stop things getting personal and getting heated. Because moving on to my next con, cyberbullying. This is a very serious one, cyberbullying. I have heard of some really bad stories and I don't want to get into details, but like one person tried to commit suicide because of things that happened on Clubhouse. Like, like what the heck? Um, what? Again, developers, if you're watching this, there's not a concrete solution to things like that, but I think more should be done and put into place to prevent situations like that. More rules, ensuring that people can't overstep boundaries and privacy. And like, I don't want to get into details, but the things that were happening or the things that I've heard happen in multiple stories are really bad. Like harassing people, stalking people. And again, the thing that I just mentioned with like suicide, it's not good at all, not good at all. So I guess those are most of the pros and cons. Let's now move on to some of my personal experiences. <laughs> so this is how it might look when I'm on the app sometimes. The audio is muted because you can get banned for recording audio without people's permission. But I do wonder how you even prove permission in the first place. This time I'm joined by my hamster, Nelson. And when I'm online, it's usually at night or in the early morning because my sleep pattern is so messed up. You wouldn't even believe me if I told you. I joined at the start of January and I think I have a good grip on how things work. I've even talked to some influencers, which is pretty cool. And um, I've met some interesting people. I also started a room and moderated it. And Alhamdulillah, it went really well. So I'm happy with that. And I've read some of my own poetry in rooms that were like full of 70 people. So that is pretty cool. Like I wouldn't have expected that before. Another thing though, I've noticed that a lot of rooms that start small just suddenly spiral and then they get huge. And of course, that's the nature of social media. If you think about it, like things that people don't intend to go well, suddenly go viral. And I think oftentimes moderators don't know how to deal with that effectively. I've seen rooms that are like sharing tips for moderators, but of course that's just people's personal opinions. That's not official training. I don't think there needs to be official training, but I just think there's so many times where people get spoken over in a sensitive issue. You don't want to listen to the other person. And I think that's wrong. People feel intimidated to even raise their hand because like the other person hasn't finished speaking yet. And then you never get a chance to speak. Like I've seen a lot of those situations and perhaps that's not a negative of the app itself. That's just basic etiquette and how do you deal with it? So that's something to think about if you have a moderator room, I guess. All in all, I hope this video has helped you. I tried to break it down for you. By now, maybe you're on the app already, as I mentioned. If you are, you can follow me and connect with me. I'm at Nablo, the same as my Instagram, and I look forward to seeing you there soon. Before I end the video, I just wanted to end by saying, I don't know if you noticed, but the jumper I'm wearing today is to recognize the farmers of Punjab 
and the struggles that they're facing. This particular jumper was created by the Cambridge University Sikh Society. I made a donation to them, they gave it directly to the farmers and I got this. I've left an article in the bio, please read it if you want to know what's going on. If you can financially contribute then please check out some of the charities doing work over there. You know, consider donating to them. Farmers, they do a lot more than we even recognise, not just in Punjab of course, like across the world. Farmers feed us, they're so essential and their struggles are being overlooked right now. In fact, they're just not being appreciated. So if you can, please read the article. That would be great. And share this video with anybody who might benefit. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like and see you next time. Bye.